well, so people say to me, what do you, do you believe in God? And I think, okay, there's a couple of mysteries in that question. What do you mean do? What do you mean you? What do you mean believe? And what do you mean God? There you have it. The smoking gun, the career destroyer. It's over, period, full stop, end of discussion, mic drop. This is it, my people. Jordan Peterson, the man whose fame has made him thinner. I just can't get over that fact. Like in Nigeria, where most people become famous and successful, they increase in size and start to compete with the likes of Lizzo, right? Over here, SS body fat is a sign of affluence, meaning now you can afford to give your poor bearers a run for their money. But beyond just looks, like looks aside, there are other things I believe you can accuse this man of. His weird hand gestures, his excessive use of the phrase multivariate analysis multivariate analysis of the pay gap indicate that it doesn't exist. And how he keeps making more rules for life as though the Ten Commandments wasn't long enough. I mean, 24 rules. This man made 24 rules. That's a lot of bloody rules. What's he trying to do? Rewrite the whole book of Leviticus? But there are other things that people accuse him of that are just, that are just weird. Like calling him a pseudo-intellectual when he's actually a professor from Harvard and was a lecturer in Canada. He has written many books and academic paper. Why those calling him a pseudo-intellectual? Those people who are calling him a pseudo-intellectual are in their first year pursuing a gender studies major at Brown University. Recently, recently I saw a comment claiming that Jordan Peterson uses his qualification in psychology to assume authority over many subjects. And how that, in a sense, you know, that in a sense makes him a pseudo-intellectual. In fact, it's not just that he's a pseudo-intellectual. He's also a grifter, right? Taking advantage of disenfranchised young men. But that's not the worst insult. I don't think that's the worst insult. For Jordan Peterson, the worst insult was when he was painted as Red Skull, created by Tanahisi Coates. As criti critiques go, that was kind of low level. I mean, once I got painted as Red Skull, you know, magical super Nazi, that was kind of the end of the insults. There's no place past that. I mean, I see the similarities, guys. I do. I see the similarities. Chapter 1 of the men kev says, make your bed. Chapter 2 says, clean your room. And chapter 3 says, wash your penis. That's, that's just Hitler 101, guys. Hitler 101. And studies have shown that 95% of people who read 12 Rules for Life, have a Hit they have a Hitler mustache. Oh. 90, as in 95%. Hmm. The claim is, 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 is based on multivariate analysis. This is something that is well researched. Don't just ask me for references. But if you want anything that looks like reference, like a reference, I mean, just, just, just Google the word Jordan Peterson, the phrase, Google it, and check the first 10 articles that pop up. According to those articles, he's the custodian of the patriarchy who believes women and men can't work together in the workplace and has no understanding of Marxism and postmodernism. Just too many isms that, that he doesn't understand. Okay, let's just also call him the lobster king, right? You add that to the list. You know, there's an article that I saw that listed 12 reasons no one should listen to Jordan Peterson. Yes, and you should check it out. But reader's discretion is advised because the article is filled with F-bombs and loads and loads of, of nonsense. So is Jordan Peterson a hack? According to this viewer of mine, yes, he's a hack, a pseudo-intellectual, a dubious character. And uh, this person sent me a link to a, a tweet, a, a, a clip, a short clip on Twitter that proved that that tried to prove their point. I guess this is the ultimate proof that Jordan Peterson is a pseudo-intellectual. Take a look. Well, the question: Did that happen? begs the question, what do you mean by happen? Because when you are dealing with fundamental realities and yes. you pose a question, yes. you have to understand that mm -hmm. the reality of the concepts of your question, when you're mm -hmm. digging that deep, are just as questionable about as what you're questioning. You know, so people say to me, what do you, do you believe in God? And I think, okay, there's a couple of mysteries in that question. What do you mean do? What do you mean you? What do you mean believe? And what do you mean God? And yeah. you say as the questioner, well, we already know what all those things mean, yeah. except belief in God. And I think, no, if we're going to get down to the fundamental brass tacks, we don't really know what any of those things mean. So there you have it. There you have it. The smoking gun, the career destroyer. It's over, period, full stop, end of discussion, mic drop. This is it, my people. 
Jordan Peterson, who claimed to be an anti postmodernist, right? That's what he claims. See him here trying to tear apart a simple, obvious, obvious question, right? And you won't believe how many articles have been written to point out his, his intellectual dishonesty from just this, this short clip. This short clip alone. I mean, flies around the carcass are nothing compared to these bloggers. And now if you are blinded by your biases and dislike and, you're, and you really dislike Jordan Peterson, if you're that person, you think this is a clear indication of intellectual dishonesty. I guess this is the ac academic equivalence of getting a phone call from a Nigerian prince, right? But if you set your biases aside, like just set your biases aside for a few minutes, the first thing you will notice is you will survive without them. Yes, it won't kill you. It won't kill you not to hold so tightly to your ideology and preconceived notion, which, which, is, mostly, which is mostly based on groupthink. The second thing you will notice is you ask yourself the question, what's the point Jordan Peterson is trying to make? What's his point? You see, before you dismantle someone's argument, first thing is understand that argument. Understand it. And how can you do that with a few second clip from a long hour conversation where a Muslim was trying to convert Jordan Peterson to his religion? So, so I have to ask. Yeah. So I don't... I don't, I don't understand the question exactly. He wants to I'm, know if you'll convert to Islam. No, I'm saying that. <laughs> no, that wasn't. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the question. Well, look, I would say to some no, but, degree, but, 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 it's not up to me. No, no, but, but, but my question was, my, my, just to remind you, the question was, if I gave you evidence that would satisfy a certain level of probabilistic... No. So you wouldn't? No, because that isn't how I evaluate the situation. How would you evaluate it? If you had taken your time to watch the whole conversation, you would have understood the point he was trying to make. And people often claim that there is an implication to Jordan Peterson's statement. That's like Katyn Newman saying, so what you are saying is... So you're saying that anyone who believes in equality, whether you call them feminists, call them whatever you want to call them, should basically give up because it ain't going to happen. No, that's not what he's trying to say. That's your bias is talking. You have, to, you have a serious case of the itching ear. An ear that only hears what he wants to hear. Just, just listen, listen. Open your ears and listen to what is actually being said. Quiet your noisy mind for a second and just listen. The point Jordan Peterson was trying to make in that video is that the question, do you believe in God, has so many connotations. People, people often assume that they know what they are, they are, they are asking when they, when, they, when, they, when, they, when they ask that question, right? We, we know what we are trying to say. We know what that question means. But whatever answer you give to this question, whatever answer, there are many, many implications that come with it. So many. On one end of the spectrum is the justification for nihilism. On the other end is a moral standard that is impossible for any man to attain, coupled with many logical and scientific inconsistencies. And then there's the aspect of human character, which is the ultimate answer to that question. I mean, you can, you can mentally agree to the existence of God while your lifestyle constantly deny this reality. It, if you say that you submit to God, but you don't, submit to God, then that word is empty. That I agree with. Yes. That, yeah, so, the so question is, why is it empty, right? So it, can, it, can it still be said, for example, can it still be said that you believe in God when you constantly act like your version of God doesn't exist? Can priests who molest young boys and pastors who rob their church members, can those people still claim that they believe in a morally just God? And even, even the proud atheists who, who, who reject the existence of God, they still have to wrestle with the consequences of that submission. Like, what then are you still living for? What's the purpose for life? If the universe has no beauty and everything is a product of chance, then why should I care? Why do I need to be civil? Why do I need to be just? What's, what's stopping me from destroying everything and not giving a damn about anything if all of it is just one big giant mistake devoid of purpose and meaning? Why? You see, every pop listen. Every purpose-driven human being, like every purpose-driven individual, have a, a foundational principle compelling them to act. And that principle, that principle is their God. That's the thing keeping them on track and preventing them from nihilistic tendencies. Which then begs the question, what is your God? When you say, I believe in God, which God are you talking about? What is God and who is God? These are two different questions that are very crucial, very crucial to the conversation of anyone's belief on this subject. Listen, I'm a devout Christian, but I understand the complexity that comes with, you know, that comes with me saying that I believe in Jesus Christ. It's a statement that Christians spent their entire lives trying to understand and explore. The earlier apostles wrote letters. These guys wrote letters trying to decipher this. They, they tried to, 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 to unravel this mystery and its glorious implications. 
The book of James says, and I quote, You believe that there is one God. You do well. But even the demons believe and tremble. Meaning demons also agree with the premise that, that the Christian faith is based on. Yet, they still try to oppose a God they know to be all-powerful. James then goes on to say, Show me your faith without any action, and I will show you my faith by my actions. Then he ended it all by saying, Just as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without actions is dead. Meaning my belief in God is meaningless. It is meaningless if my actions opposes what I profess. And so, for me, belief, okay. for example, is often reflected not so much in proposition as it is in action. If I want to know yeah. what you believe, I could ask you, and hopefully you have some idea about what you believe, but I'd rather see what you do. What, can I what he's saying is, is, is an echo of ancient wisdom. He's just re-echoing ancient wisdom the same way amateur comedians repeat other people's punchlines. See, time changes, but the truth remains the same. And what you call a shallow, as in unintelligible, dubious rambling of a pseudo-intellectual is actually the truth. But you didn't need to hear it from me. Like, there was no point in me making this video if you had just taken the time to listen to the whole conversation to really understand the points that was being made. Which you may not even agree with. You may not agree with, with this point I'm making here, but if you had at least tried to understand the man, there would be no need. There will practically be no need for me to make this video, and you would have seen the wisdom behind that statement. But I don't know, I don't know if Jordan Peterson is, is, is a dubious intellectual. You know, I can't I can't I can't speak to what is going on in his head. I mean, there's probably some evidence out there that suggests he's a grifter. Who knows? I, I myself can be a grifter without even knowing it. I've been told that I, I'm being oppressed by white people. Yes, I learn new things every day. You know, I live in Nigeria, in Enugu precisely. <laughs> Do you know how difficult it is to find a white person in Enugu? I'm sure there are, there are no more than 10 white people in Enugu right now. And that's just me being generous. But unknown to me is the fact that somehow, white people are oppressing me. So you can see my level of, of complete ignorance. And maybe there is something I'm missing. We all, we all know in part, so please leave your contrary evidence in the comments. You know, and perhaps a few second clip of a long hour interview doesn't count as, as admissible evidence. But who's counter, right? I mean, I would love to read what you have to say. And as always, your comments are deeply appreciated. Thank you. Yeah. By the way, you can you can subscribe and uh, and like this video and also share share to your friends. They may have something to say to support your idea that Jordan Peterson is a pseudo intellectual. Maybe if you don't have it, you know, just just do the needful eh? and, and 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 promote this video. Thank you very much. <laughs>